In order to show how to use widening and narrowing conversion, let's go ahead and look at the code before looking at the demos. Here in the first line of the code, a thousand is stored to an integer. Next, the value of 5.99 is stored into a decimal. After declaring another variable of type decimal, the quantity times cost is then stored into the total variable. When displayed, the total displayed will be 5990. In the next method, once again the value of 1000 is assigned to the integer value. 5.99 is then assigned to the decimal variable. In the next line of code, an integer value is declared, after which the integer is multiplied by the decimal and then assigned to the integer. Now the problem comes in that we'll lose some of our precision because instead of having a 5.99, we'll end up multiplying the quantity just times 5. This is not good. And in fact, we'll look at some other ways of converting. But for now, we're going to show what happens when you use narrowing conversion. Notice that we'll have to cast the cost variable as an int. If we didn't have this cast in here, we'd receive an error. Unlike other languages, such as VB, which will let you get away with this, C Sharp won't. So for example, if I come in here and delete this, and then try to compile, I get an error. It'll then tell me exactly what the error is. You cannot implicitly convert data type decimal to int. Hence is the reason I need to have the explicit casting in here. Let's go ahead and run these two methods and take a look at the results in the output window. Now again, we assign 1,000 to quantity, 5.99 to cost. When we multiply these and display the value, we see the 5,990 with the point zero zero after. Again, remember this is a decimal value. Continuing on to narrowing conversion, we assign 1,000 to quantity, 5.99 to cost, we multiply that and store that into an integer, again casting the cost as an integer. And you can see that our total ends up being 5,000. Again, you have to watch out for that when dealing with narrowing conversion.